the idea would be to derive derive uh, this formula. So let's see how this goes. So let's start from here. Uh, let me define this quadratic functional uh, Q taking f as an argument and the value of the function is this and we'll put the norm uh, square. And I want to prove that the unique minimizer, minimizing point of this function Q can be computed with the formula we have. And we also have a so we have k by n matrix here, and our assumptions were k is larger than n, and and uh, similar values of k are strictly positive uh, for all. values are strictly positive. Uh, in that case, that function has uh, a unique minimum, which unfortunately I will not prove here. <coughs> if you still, if you really insist and, and want to know it, uh, I will put it as an exercise, for sure. Maybe I should include the proof. But anyway, at least based on the pictures we saw, so there is a unique minimum. If we trust the picture, that's what it looks like. Okay, so then. Our starting point is, is, is to note that um, Take uh, a vector in R n, but not the zero vector. Some non-zero uh, vector in R n. Uh, then this is this is now uh, our point. Mm, if you look at Let me call the minimal point um, <coughs> Q as a unique, unique uh, minimizer. Let me call it F0 in Rn. So there is an F0 vector in Rn. So that uh, the function q evaluated at f0 has the smallest value that the function q ever has. With any other f here, it will give uh, a bigger value than with f0. I think I should include a proof of that, because I always have to say that that's just how it is. At least in the examples we had and saw in the picture, that's how it is. There is one point where the function is at the minimum. And then uh, we do the trick we saw in the little video, namely, uh, let's evaluate Q at the point um, F0, the point that minimizes Q plus P times W. This is, you saw, the, the blue line going uh, in, in the video along along uh, the bottom below our, our function, t, t is a real number, and w is a fixed direction in Rn. So we are evaluating the q function along 
a one-dimensional line that passes through uh, the minimal point, the point that gives Q the minimal value. That happens when t, t equals zero. And I'm claiming that the derivative of this thing here with respect to t evaluated at t equals zero is zero. That's the thing I said. When I, when I started with this one, for years, I had big difficulties of convincing the audience that this is the case. This, this is the thing we saw in the little video. Here, this evaluation point, the blue line in the plane was passing through uh, the point giving the minimum, and it happens exactly when the parameter t equals zero, and we agreed already 25 minutes ago that the derivative of this parabola at the point t equals zero is zero. Do you still agree? I mean, who thinks this is okay? Who thinks it's absolutely crystal clear that this is the case? No one. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm great. Okay, one. Well, no, <laughs> good. I know. At least someone, yes. <laughs> but I had the proof based on the video. Come on. <laughs> Maybe I have to work on this routine even more. But you need to agree with me. I mean, yeah. I just, I just take that and continue. So, um, this thing here, let's write it. Uh, let's write it uh, out. So we have d dt, <coughs> and we have um, n times f0 plus tw minus m squared, norm squared, and this derivative thingy here is evaluated at t equals 0. And then just a little, uh, a little comment that um, for any x, If we write for any vector x, uh, the norm squared equals x transpose x, so x is a vertical vector, so this is just an inner product, which sometimes we uh, write like this, and sometimes we write the inner product in this form. <coughs> right. Okay. Who thinks this is okay? One, two, oh, okay, okay. Almost okay. Almost everybody agrees. No, it's almost okay. It's almost okay. Yeah, I always get a bit frustrated when you get, uh, like, you know, you say X transpose, so X is, um, no, that's, that's, that's a matrix, that's a one dimensional, that's not, yeah, yeah and that's not saying the real number or <laughs> something like this. That's what it is. Yeah. X transpose. Yeah. So it is a matrix multiplication, really. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, it will become one times one matrix. Yeah, it will. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. So that's one square number. Square. Square. Of course, it's the same, same number inside the matrix. That's what it is, yes. But it's the same thing, you think that's just throwing uh, like those same. Yes. Have a look at the bottom of the real book. Okay. Good man. Nice. And also. Then I'm satisfied. Oh, good. Already at this point, let me also point out uh, that if we have, uh, if we take this, if we take this as a definition, this uh, equals this. We can also see something like if we have a x inner product with x. Mm. Well, in this case, actually, we should have because this is a k by n, k by n matrix, and this is in R n. So the result when we do this, we should have actually let's, let me call let's just have m. So this is in R 
k, so this is an inner product like this, uh, which we can write uh, using this notation, we just have ax transpose times m. Now again, with matrix multiplication between a vertical vector and a horizontal vector and vertical vector in Rk. But also by just matrix algebra, uh, I can write this as as uh, x transpose uh, a transpose times n, right? But this I can also write x transpose a transpose m matrix multiplication. Right? Oh, I'm seeing some confusion already. And looking at the definition here, actually we can say that this is uh, this is x a transpose m inner product. But this is an inner product between vectors in R n. This is an inner product between vectors in R k. But however, there is such an equality by using a secret weapon, mathematics. We will use this in the near future. Okay, so uh, we have this thing here, and now uh, based on what I just wrote, Let's continue this here because it will be longer. So now let me just write this as, so we still have this, this here, but let me write whatever we have inside there, we have A multiplying F0 plus T W minus M in a product with itself. going on yet. Then let's start uh, multiplying the stuff inside and see what do we have there. So we have uh, we have a f0 plus t a w minus m inner product with the same thing, a f0 plus t a w minus m. And then we can use the, uh, the, the rules of the inner product, because it's a linear operation, we can just uh, start multiplying these, so we get actually several terms inside, namely this inner product with this guy, so that will be actually a f0 norm squared, this one inner product with this one, is this, uh, then we have this guy inner product with this one, so we have plus uh, a F zero inner product with uh, T A W and we can take the T in front because of linearity here and actually we have two of these guys because this inner product with this one will be the same thing than this guy inner product with this one. So we will actually have two of these. Right? Oh, okay, okay. So we have something like that. 
like that. Um, then what else do we have? So now we have those guys. So then we have this containing M. So we have, for example, this A F0 inner product with minus M. So we have minus, we have A F0 inner product with M. And we have two of those because we have another one from here. Then what else do we have? Uh, oh, well, we have, of course, this one inner product with itself, which will be T squared uh, AW uh, norm squared. Then what else? What else? Uh, should we? Then we have this with the M thingy. So then we have again we have two of them. We have minus two. Uh, E A W inner product with M, I think, right? And then we have M inner product with itself, which should be this one, I guess. Okay, do we, do we have all? Uh, should we have nine terms, maybe? They're still. No. I think nine terms, there were three and three, nine terms, so we have two, four, six terms, seven, eight, nine. Maybe it's all there. And close this all, the whole thing evaluated at t equals zero. All right, so then let's see, uh, we need to differentiate with respect to t. So where, where is T? Where is T? Here, mm, here, and here we have T. The other terms will become zero with the derivative because they, they, they are constant with respect to T. So we can apply our derivative and see we have something from here. We have two a F zero A W inner product. Then we have this one. We have well, let's take this. So we have plus two T uh, A W norm squared, and we have minus two times A W inner product with M, and all of these things evaluated at T equals zero, right? And at this point we have T only here, and we will put T to zero, so this will go away. So we can still continue, and what do we have? We have. Uh, Two times, and we have um, and now remember, remember the thing I did with the matrix and inner product. I can move this matrix A to the other side if I transpose it. We we saw that kind of formula. So we have here we have. A transpose A of F0 inner product with W. And we have minus, also here I will move the A matrix on the other side. And just to confuse you, I will also change the order. That's what we have right now, and 
still, because of the linearity of the inner product, we can write this like this. A transpose A, F0 minus A transpose M, inner product with the vector W. Ah, a lot of computations. We are in this kind of situation. Now let's let's backtrack a little bit and see where did we start. We started from here, so all of this thing should be equal to zero. If you agree with my little video proof of the whole thing here being zero, so if that's okay, uh, all of this stuff will be zero, zero, zero. So so actually this thing here is zero. And this thing here, this inner product, is, is, is zero. So this is this here is a vector in Rn. And this is a vector in Rn. And we started taking uh, an arbitrary non-zero w here. So now we see that this vector this vector here in Rn, uh, inner product with an arbitrary non-zero n vector equals zero. So that actually gives some gives us some important information about this vector. Any any uh, ideas? What can we know about this vector? It is perpendicular to W. Yes, and W is any non-zero vector. Yes. Yeah, it has to be zero. It has to be zero. Yes. This thing here necessarily is zero. So A transpose A F zero minus this guy equals so I just move this one on the other side. Like this. And now when we take a look at this uh, a transpose A, how does it look like? Let's put in our singular value decomposition. So we have A is, is U, D, V transpose, and A transpose is V, D transpose, <coughs> U transpose. But this here is identity because of the properties of the singular value decomposition. So we actually see that this A transpose A, mm, ah, sorry. So this just equals V, and then we have D, D transpose times D. So this is D transpose, this is D, and here we have B transpose. So now you see that this here is a K by K matrix. This here is just a matrix with, with a singular value first squared and up to singular value N squared. Sorry, I think it should be N by N. Yeah, this is so, sorry. It's an n by n matrix, and these are also n by n. n by n, n by n. And this is uh, invertible, because we assume that all the singular values are strictly positive. So this is invertible. V is also invertible. It's inverse, it's V transpose. So we have invertible, invertible, invertible. So this guy, is invertible under our uh, assumptions. So therefore, we see that F0, the minimizing point for our quadratic functional equals auto inverse applied to A transpose M. Yes. Uh, 
Yes. Because I mean, if you just have two vectors and they're perpendicular to each other, and one of them is not there, it doesn't mean that the other. It doesn't. Yeah, that's right. But this, this here, is non-zero and arbitrary. And therefore, so uh, so we have a formula for the naive inversion for uh, matrices A where K is bigger than N, and that was actually the case for our topography matrix. <laughs> So now we can actually try naive inversion for tomography. Let's try it. Unless yeah, if there are more questions about this stuff. Stunt audience. Every time, I think this is now maybe, I think it's the tenth time I'm, I'm teaching this course. Every, every time the same thing with this material. Just, I don't know what to do with it. But. Yeah, so the, um, that is the pseudo inverse in the case that they are all uh, positive. That yes, is yeah. yes, okay. it is. Yes. So we should prove it also by just plugging the, the single value decomposition in there, uh, in the, that, that green in your, uh, and then just calculate it and, and see that it gives you the pseudo inverse. And then you have so. Yes, yeah. it could be done that way, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So this is very much the same thing. Uh, I mean, the proof you will go through in the exercises for the pseudo inverse that it will give the minimum norm solution. So the whole computation here is just an uh, alternative proof for uh, a re more restricted result. Yeah. However, the same computation done here, uh, adding the of regularization term, which we will talk about next week. More, uh, the same, a little, just a little bit more, compu more complex computation will give us a really useful formula for computing Tihonov regularized solutions. Even so-called uh, generalized Tihonov regularized solutions, and also it will, uh, it will give us uh, a nice formula which comes in handy when uh, we want to do matrix-free computations. Because sometimes our measurement matrix is so large that it's not a good idea to compute the singular value decomposition numerically, because that, that's a really heavy computation. So using this kind of calculation we did, we can derive the so-called normal, well, these are normal equations, uh, but we can also derive such a form for, for the even of equalization that will give us uh, a very nice matrix-free, a large-scale uh, inversion method. So yeah. What is that in generalized? Yes, it is. Um, so, since you asked, let me. what we do is uh, in ill post inverse problems it really is not enough to just find uh, a minimizer for this expression and not even uh, not even taking the minimum norm solution among the possibly infinite number of minimizers of this one because of the ill post <coughs> if the condition number of the matrix is large we will see amplification of noise. The problems with Adamat's condition number three. And to overcome those problems, in the even of regularization, uh, we define so-called F alpha. I use, I use here uh, argmin Argmin means 